Commentator, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Radioactive03. Uh, I've been running Fallout 3 for the past four years along with Banana, and it's a really fun run. I hope you all enjoy it. Radio has been a huge help for me with Fallout speedrunning in general, so very glad to have him here. So, what exactly is all quests? It's completing all 31 quests within the game. The 31 quests is completing the final quest in the game when you enter in the code uh, to the water purifier. And I'm going to quick load just to make sure at the very end to show you guys that we have 30 quests and we completed all of them. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start this game in French because French won the bid war. And we start from a loaded save um, just because we skipped the intro cutscene. And let's get started. So, three, two, one, let's go. First thing we're going to do is make our way towards dad. And the first tech in the game, quick saving, quick loading, is going to be used to skip dialogue. And there we go. I haven't played in French, so this is going to be a little interesting. Just the dialogue, wasn't able to get the text. And we're going to go ahead and put in specific special characters just to make sure that we can have the correct stats. Mostly looking for speech, lockpick, and repair. And now we're going to be setting up for a trick called truck push. You want to explain that, Radio? So truck push is uh, a subset of a glitch, uh, which basically allows you to move actors without them walking. So as you'll see here, when he starts talking, he gets stuck on the truck, and then you can move him as if he was another item. Which, when you move him into the trigger, he'll start to talk, and you can skip the entire section. Yep, so we got the cutscenes in French, at least, that's really good. And we're going to be at our birthday party, and we're just going to quick save, quick load a few times to go ahead and advance this dialogue, because birthdays are kind of slow, so we're just going to clip through this door, if it'll let me. There we go. And do another movement tech called stop hopping. Radio? So stop hopping is essentially the Bethesda's version of bee hopping or bunny hopping, where you gain around 50% extra movement speed, and it is technically the fastest movement speed in uh, Fallout 3, but later on we'll go to another uh, type of movement tech, which is far easier. Yep, and now we get our BB gun, which is our birthday present from our dad. And we're going to test fire a little bit, and a Radroach comes walking by. And we're going to one-shot it with the BB gun. Just because we're playing on very easy, it will die in one shot. But there's a chance that you can crit strike it, or you'll have to shoot it twice to kill it. We're going to push Dad to this trigger to get a nice photo with our dad and advance more into the future right before our GOAT exam. And the GOAT exam is where you get to pick your special traits, where you can pick... Um, explosives, lockpick, but we're going to pick three specific ones, which is lockpick, speech, and repair. Those are the three that we're going to be looking for throughout the entire run. Those are the ones that are essential to finishing this run. So we're just stop hopping through. We could sit down in one of the desks and answer all the questions, but we're just going to go ahead and skip all that and pick what we want. Now we have a more into the future where we're going to go ahead and talk to Amada, and this is the vault escape sequence where we're going to be clipping out of bounds and doing, well, and hitting a COC trigger. And Radio, if you want to explain COC a little bit better. So COC stands for Center on Cell, and pretty much every Bethesda game is split up into cells. So every place you enter is known as a cell which is basically just a giant box. If you hit the bottom of that box, you get teleported to a, a random place, pretty much, which is pretty much always at the exit. So, as you'll see here, we can uh, skip straight to the exit of uh, the vault sequence. Yep, and then we just exit the vault, and now we're going to make our way towards the next fastest movement cycle of the game. Typically, if you're doing any percent, you will go on top of the cliff and do a movement tech called Cliff Curful, but we're going to be going and getting the Missile Launcher, which is essential for this run, and do something called Missile Cripple. And we're going to put two into explosives, so we get 25 explosives, the rest in the speech, and the perk here doesn't really matter, so I just picked Black Widow just because it's one of the fastest that you can pick. We're going to make our way towards Megaton, wait for the doors to open, and go to Lucky, 
get the missile launcher, and do another cool glitch. It's called ghost duping. Radio was kind of the one who implemented it into this run, so you probably explain it best, Radio. Basically, if you try to move an item at the same time as changing item, you can create a ghost item, for lack of a better word. Which means that you can go from having 36 ammo to having 36 missile launchers. But it's called a, a ghost item because the item doesn't really exist. But you still get the store credit of that item. Alright, so now we're doing Missile Cripple, which will give us Speed Cripple. Which is now the most consistent, fastest movement tech of the game. As Radio said previously, stop hopping is the fastest, but instead we're going to be doing this just because, first off, it saves your wrist, and it's more consistent, and you'll end up being faster in the long run with it. Now we're going to go towards Moira and talk to her about <laughs> our... Uh, a talk about the Wasteland Survival Guide. And we're going to go ahead and just talk to her and convince her to give up on her dreams. Um... Failed the first time, but I put a quick save down so I can just continue to do this over and over again. It's going to keep... <laughs> Hopefully we don't get it to fail over and over again, because it's entirely RNG dependent if you get it. So this skips the entirety of the Wasteland Survival Guide quest, which is a pretty long quest because it's set up into multiple chapters. But by crushing her dreams, you can complete it almost instantly. Yeah. Now, since we disarmed the bomb in the middle of Megaton, we're going to go ahead and get our key from Lucas Sims. We're going to put everything into lockpick, and now we can leave Megaton. And we're going to go towards the Super Duper Mart, and at the Super Duper Mart is where we would have done part of the Wasteland Survival Guide, but we just leave, and we don't do that. But we're going to be looking for Nuka-Cola Quantums. They can spawn in the vending machines, and they have a 10% chance of doing that, but... If it doesn't spawn in any of them, we can reset the inventory of the one inside. That's done by quick saving beforehand and just refreshing the inside by quick loading because the game... Sorry, Radio, if you want to explain that a little bit better. Yeah, You're so <laughs> as we mentioned before, everything is split up into cells, but a cell won't load until you enter it. And for some reason, if you load a save where you haven't entered a cell, that cell will have never existed. So every time you enter, the cell gets refreshed, and the inventory of everything inside also gets refreshed. So since there's yeah. a vending machine right at the start, every time you reload, its inventory gets refreshed, and eventually you'll get a new color quantum. So yeah, I'm just going to keep doing this, and I'm looking inside for the Nuka Cola Quantum underneath the Nuka Cola that'll almost always spawn in there. So we just keep doing this over and over again, we get the Nuka Cola Quantum. And we'll make our way towards this metro station over here, where we can go ahead and talk to Dukov. Well, not really talk to Dukov. We have to get the key off of Dukov for a quest later on, but since we're already there, we might as well just get the quest done. So I'm going to go ahead and just fast travel to this, because it's a little bit quicker than going up the stairs, and we can make our way all the way there. This is a little bit of a walking section, so if we have any donations, this would be a perfect time. Awesome. We have a $250 donation. Hey everyone, it's the directors of the new documentary, Running With Speed, here. And we're thrilled to be sponsors of AGDQ 2023. Four years ago, we fell in love with the incredible passion of the GDQ speedrunning community and set out to create the definitive documentary. This week, our film is finally available, and we couldn't be more thrilled with the community response. Running with Speed is narrated by internet legend Summoning Salt, and during AGDQ, one dollar from every sale is going to prevent cancer foundation in donations like this. Awesome. So, we have some people in here. What we want to do is make sure that our karma is low enough to pass a speech check later on. So there's a little bit of collateral damage, but it doesn't matter too, too much if you go ahead and miss that. But we're going to loot Duk uh, Dukov and get those whiskey bottles, because the whiskey bottles are going to be good for later on whenever we're trying to dupe the Nuka-Cola Quantums. There's not 30 Nuka-Cola Quantums, because if you've ever played 
Fallout 3 and you know about the Nuka-Cola Quantum Challenge, you have to turn in a total of 30 Nuka-Cola Quantums. With the whiskey bottles, we picked up roughly about 30 and we're able to duplicate that way. We can't do it with caps and we can't do it with ammo, if I'm correct, Radio. Yeah, that's because for some reason to dupe, you need to have weight um, to show up a message box, which we can then exploit to be able to duplicate an item. So whiskey is one of the easiest things we have a mass abundance of. Yeah, and it, since it's all on that table, we're able to lower our karma as well. Well, raise our... Is it lower? It's lower our karma. And we be more of a bad guy, so we can pass speech checks better with the other bad guys. And we're going to make our way towards the Jefferson Memorial right here. And there's little lines on the bridge here where we can just make our way up, turn right around, so we don't get in combat with the enemies, and we can walk right away and make our way towards Big Town. Big Town is home to the quest, Trouble in Big Town, where we have to go ahead and rescue Red and Big Shorty. But we only rescue we only rescue Red. That's just because Big Shorty is a little bit more out of the way, and you only have to rescue Red in order to complete the quest. But th again, that's going to be a little bit later on. This is more of just setting up for later on. Yeah, a, lot a lot of, of the, the early game. Run. Yeah, a lot of the start of the run is uh, setting up quests for the rest of the game, so we won't finish a lot of these until like the last half an hour. Yeah, you'll see me talking to random people, and that'll be turning in one quest or turning in another, but I'll be sure to let you guys know whenever we finish some of these quests, and it's whether you find one person or you find another person, just to talk to them, just to advance it a little bit because it's right on your way. So typically you would go around all the way to the front here and talk to this guard, but since we jumped inside off the mailbox on top of the roof inside of Big Town, we're able to skip all of that and then just make our way inside. And now we're on our way to Arafu. And there's a fun little glitch, it's called Time Stop, where exactly what the name sounds like, it stops time around you. and. Radio made a nice little auto hotkey that uh, helps out with that. So if you also, <laughs> that's probably more your line of uh, expertise. Okay, so for the not 76 Fallout games, well, for the modern Fallout games that aren't 76 anyway, so 3, New Vegas, and 4, you time pauses when you open your Pit Boy. If for some magical reason you can close your Pit Boy but also have it open at the same time, you would be able to move and have time frozen. And it just so happens that we have a way to do that. So essentially, what you'll see here is that the pit boy will open and close, but it'll act like it's still open, which means we can walk past any trigger and no one will talk to us. Yeah, and the way, something that I didn't explain earlier, the way that quick saving and quick loading works is that I have a bound to mouse one and mouse two. That's how I'm able to do it super fast, and with the auto hotkey, it changes the mouse to button to select, which allows us to do time stop. Without that, you can't do time stop, just because you can't quick load whenever you're up in your pit boy and yeah, you can't as click you try to uh, place the map marker, when you right-click to place the map marker, it'll instead it'll load your save, so you can never do both when they have the same bind. Yeah, so what we did there is we checked with all the houses and checked to see if everyone was okay, but we realized that the Wests are dead, and only the parents there. So with that, we're just going to go ahead and tell him the parents are dead, and the sun is missing. And now our goal is to go ahead and find the sun. And the sun is actually in this little metro area right there, but we're not going to go there just yet. We're going to grab the fast travel and make our way towards Paradise Falls. At Paradise Falls, this is where the... Um, this is where a group is, and... <laughs> they tell you to go ahead and hunt for some people. And instead of turning them in, we're only going to turn one person in because they asked for four people to turn in. Uh, we're going to kill one. We're going to kill two, free one, 
and then give them one, because you only need one to actually pass the quest. And the karma is also going to tie into this, because if our karma is too high, we won't be able to pass a speech check, but all it does is just add another dialogue box, so it's not too big of a deal. But at the same time, you want to save as much time as you can in this run because it is pretty tight, especially with a lot of the clips, if you get them first try. So we go ahead and do that, do the Karma check. He gives us the, he gives us the Mesmatron and the Collars, and we can now make our way towards the minefield. One of the things that I'm also doing is quick saving as much as possible because this is an older game and it has a chance of crashing every once in a while. So I'm just going to be continually quick saving because if the game crashes, I'm going to have to go ahead and get speed cripple again. And getting speed cripple again is sometimes just a little bit of a pain. So I was very happy that we got it as early as we did. And we're going to continue walking by continually quick saving. We're going to make our way towards Germantown and right after Germantown police headquarters, we make our way towards the minefield. And another reason for quick saving is just because we want to make sure that we don't fail the blood ties quest because it can randomly fail. The quest can randomly fail if you're when you're walking your when you're walking this way. So I quick save just to make sure if it does fail, I can quick load and it'll be fine. And we still have a little bit for walking, so probably good for about one or two donations. All right, we've got $100 from Tanar Thompson. Hello, GDQ. First time donator. I've watched many runs on YouTube, but this is the first time I've sat down to watch an event live. This donation is in honor of my mom, who has been fighting neuroendocrine cancer for the last two years, and for my grandpa that lost his fight to cancer last year. All the runners are doing such a great job so far, and I'm having so much fun watching. Let's go. Alrighty, um, so we're making our way towards the minefield right now. Typically, you would have to watch out for all the mines, but since we have speed cripple, we can just run right past them. It's not a big deal at all. Every single time that a mine goes off, you'll just hear it in the background. But if you do slow down, there's a chance of you losing speed cripple because if you cripple your legs as well, that's another way to lose speed cripple. So we get on top of this mound, we make our way towards our friend Arkansas, shoot him a few times, and make our way out of here. And now we are on our way towards the Alien Blaster. The Alien Blaster is the best weapon in the game because it'll one-shot just about everything, except for Death Claws and the Mechanist. The Mechanist takes about three shots and the Death Claw takes about two, but again, this is played on very easy, so a broken weapon like this is bound to have its limitations, especially on the ammo, because you only have the fusion cells or the energy cells that spawn at the alien crash site. This little bit up here also has random encounters. You're going to be seeing a lot of random encounters throughout this run, and it can go from having someone run up to you, or it can be a fridge, or it could be a scorpion. It can be a whole mess of things. I've had just a pack of Brahmin as well. So keep an eye out for that. You'll see some random encounters pop up. And this is the Alien Blaster. If you have the DLCs enabled, it'll pop up with the uh, Zeta DLC. But since we have the DLCs disabled for this, we just can go right up to it, get the Alien Blaster, and walk away. Now we make our way towards Vault 92, just to get the fast travel, and then we're going to make our way all the way to Oasis, but instead of going the traditional route, which would be around the mountain, we go through the mountain, which makes it just a little bit easier and a little bit faster. And this is a longer walking section, so again, some more donations would be awesome. Awesome. We have $25 from bubblegum to love Shout out to the tech crew, you're all amazing. We also have a $500 donation from Hunger F3. Thank you very much for that donation. We, we still got a little bit, so if you got more, sorry. <laughs> We've, I sure do. We've got $50 from Seth F, who says, I don't know what a cute kitten overload is, but I need to see it. Less than three. 
And I certainly would like to see that Q-Kitten overload. We have actually passed a third of the way. We have raised over $3,334 out of $10,000. So make sure you get your donations in for that. We are also past the halfway point for that Hitman Blood Money upgrade to Pro SA as well. So make sure you get your donations in for both of those. And yes, you can put your donation towards more than one run at the same time on that donation page if you want to donate to both. There we go. All right, well, uh, we can probably do one more just before we get into the mountain. We have $25 from Ildleaf. I think that's right. No idea what a zip glitch is, but I'm down to see them in Castlevania Harmony of Despair, which is yet another incentive we have open right now. $831 out of 5000 Awesome. All right, so now we're making our way towards the outside of the mountain where Oasis is. And like I said, instead of going around, we make our way towards this little crevice right here and we can quick save, quick load, go straight through the mountain and make our way into here. There's a whole bunch of invisible walls that we have to watch out for. So I'm gonna be going a pretty specific way. If I go straight here, I'll hit a wall. If I go left, I'll hit a wall. Oh, there we go, I found one. and you're gonna go ahead and make your way into this little crevice right here, and I can make my way to 92 and go inside. Radio, if you wanna explain a little bit about Vault 92. So Vault 92 is, I think, famously a music vault where a bunch of musicians were, but it holds a famous violin, which I'm not gonna name because it's pronounced different to how it looks, and I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's a famous violin that someone in the wasteland wants. In fact, multiple people want multiple people want it. One of them has good intentions, one of them has bad. It so happens that the bad one may be faster. Yeah. So what I did there was I went ahead and clipped through on top of the geometry. I did a third person interaction while dropping down so I could pick it up, hit the COC, and then walk through the door, hit another COC so I can leave the vault faster. Like Radio said specifically, uh, there are specific points for COCs where it's going to land you. So the way we route it out is we figure out how deep can we go in with the COC or is it easiest to exit the vault with the COC. And most of the walls in this game are almost paper thin, so we just go ahead and generally run up against it, quick save, quick load, and we'll go right through. But now we're going to make our way towards Dave. Dave is in charge of the Republic of Dave. And we have to go ahead into his house, kill him to go ahead and pick up his special key for the shoot him in the head quest. It's the same key that we got off of Dukov, and we're going to have to get one off of... Remember the name radio? Ted Strayer in uh, Rivet City. Ted Strayer. Yep. Ted Strayer also has a, a special key, and we're going to turn those in later on in the run. And I'm going to jump right in instead of going to the main entrance and make our way inside. Once we go up here, he's going to be sleeping, but we're going to help him go to sleep, grab his key, and make our way out. And one of the ways that you can know if you can fast travel, fast travel in this game is if you continually spam wait. If you can wait, you can fast travel. So I'm going to spam wait, go to the minefield, and make my way over here. Again, we go back to the minefield so we can now go to the Temple of Union. At the Temple of Union, we're going to go ahead and kill Hannibal Hamlin, which we need to tell Leroy Walker later on inside of the Lincoln Memorial. And we can just go ahead and do that in two different ways. The fastest way is going to be going to the right side, but uh, the safer way is just going right in front. We got a little bit more of a walking section, so if any donations, this would be great. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, yeah, not the best at pronouncing that, so.
All right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just um. So for the level ups, we just throw everything into lockpick, and now we're making our way up towards the Temple of Union, and here, ooh, geometry. Make our way up here. Kill Hannibal Hamlin. First shot. The cone fire is a little bit unpredictable in this game, so it can go anywhere from left to right to right above him. And make our way all the way up here towards Canterbury Commons, right, Radio? Yeah. Yeah, so Canterbury Commons is where we go ahead and do the Superhuman Gambit. The Superhuman Gambit is where we're going to kill the Mechanist and we're going to leave the Antagonizer alone. We talk to Uncle Ro just to grab the quest, and then we finish the quest as soon as we kill the Mechanist. On our way there, we kill one of the, protect uh, the Protectrons, which is just standing right outside. So we're coming up on it right now. Gets a little bit loud with killing this guy and going right back outside. Hopefully I turned it down enough. It's just sounds of metal rattling. So we go ahead and tell him that we're able to help, and we leave. We go out towards Canterbury Commons. There's that noise. Kill the Mechanist with the Alien Blaster. No big deal. Make our way back out. Go to Uncle Ro. Turn in the quest. Leave. And now we can go ahead and dupe those Nuka-Cola Quantums that I was talking about. And we just go here. Oh. Wrong save. Thankfully, there's an autosave right there. Makes it super easy to do. The timing for this can be a little bit tricky. And surprised it took me that long, but we got it. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and do blood ties. Blood ties. No, not blood ties. Those. <laughs> Those is a fun quest where we go ahead and make our way down and towards the Queen, Queen Ant Hatchery, which is guarded by Dr. Lesko. And we just go down there, send the inhibitor pulse, and we'll get rid of all of the ants that are inside of this town. We just make our way towards this metro here. We're going to be doing some more COCing, so you'll see me just go through the void real quick and then come back out on the other end. So we go ahead and look right into this corner. It can be a pretty precise lineup for this. I typically just jam my head against the wall until it works. There we go. And go all the way down, ignoring all the ants. One of the things with this run is that you can take a lot of damage really quick. I made sure to grab the safety stim packs and not sell them early in the run. But we're going to go ahead and talk to our friend here real quick. Uh, hey, buddy. We grab his terminal passcode, unlock the hatchery, and make our way further down. While we do this, we just navigate through the tunnels a little bit, and we'll find the queen ant at the very bottom. We'll send the inhibitor pulse and send our way back up. And Radio, if you want to explain a little bit about our good friend uh, Brian and uh, what might happen. So the quest, though, pretty much revolves around, if you were to play it casually, meeting a child called Brian who has lost his parents and is trying to find them. So... To do this, you sort out the ant problem, and he'll come talk to you and be like, "Thank you for you know solving everything. Can you help me now find my dad or find a place to live?" Unfortunately for speedruns, Brian is a little bit weird. Sometimes he likes to stop existing, Not and what there. this means is normally it will completely kill your run. He will just either not spawn or be stuck somewhere, so you can never find him. But we have a safety thing called console because we expected this to happen. Trop there he is. Seul coup. So we just go ahead and spam all the middle dialogue. Typically, that would just be the end of the run. But because we have the wonderful thing known as console, uh, we can fix that. Now we go ahead and clear out the Jefferson Memorial. 
In the Jefferson Memorial, you have to kill all of these super mutants and the centaurs, which are inside. There are eight upstairs and six downstairs, so we got to make sure that we kill all of them. If we don't kill all of them, Dad and the rest of the uh, science team won't come up into the Jefferson Memorial until you go back in and fix it yourself. They, uh, they won't help you at all. <laughs> they will tell you, you have to go in and fix it. So we just kill them beforehand because it's on our way to go ahead and get to Rivet City and later go downtown. Now we're going to go ahead deeper in towards the basement and kill the rest of the super mutants inside. This guy's hiding. Can I get him? Uh, I'm going to have to go get him later. There we go. So you may notice so instead that, of, that we don't oh, actually uh, reload a lot during this run by uh, unequipping and re-equipping your weapon. It automatically reloads your weapon and it's far faster. Yeah. This is just the easiest way to do it and it makes it so much better because the alien blaster if you look at the condition there's a chance that you'll do a little animation of pulling on the um on the cell going inside of it and it just loses time putting it away because the higher your carry weight or if you have a weapon out the slower you'll move so that was all of jefferson and now we're going to make our way towards rivet city at Rivet City, we're not going to do anything just yet. We're just going to grab the fast travel and make our way into Anacostia Crossroads. Inside there, we're going to go ahead and make our way towards the Museum District. And I explained a little bit of what we're going to be doing, so right now would be perfect for a donation. All right, so fun fact, I totally forgot to unmute myself on my stream output end for that last break, so no one heard what I said <laughs> except like the, four, the three of us in the studio crew. Um, but for all of you who are watching right now, I revealed the fun fact that that violin for a while back is pronounced the Swalstrat, or Swalstrad, uh, Swal so that's what Banana Pegasus was reacting to. And we also had a $25 donation from Brittany Bowie, who says, Been loving watching GDQ for years with my husband. Can't wait to see the Fallout 3 run. Good luck to all the runners throughout the marathon. We got time for probably about two more. Perfect. We have a $50 anonymous donation who submits another ticket for the haiku train, please. Fallout 3 speedrun. Clean the water, save the land. Tree grows from a man. We have $25 from Alschlein who says, Goat Sim Incentive, you've got to be kidding me. And we've raised almost $3,400 for that $10,000 incentive for Goat Simulator Q Kid and Overload. So get your donations in for that. All right. So now we're going to make our way towards the Museum of Technology. There are two different clips that you can do here, or you can just walk all the way around. I'm going to show you guys the uh, little bit faster way of doing it, but the little more risky way of doing it. So we clip into this rubble and we got the first half of the hard part done and we're going to continue to try and clip through. There we go. Made it through. I was surprised that I <laughs> didn't get stuck in the rubble. But whenever we go ahead and get to a locked door like this, we quick save beforehand and we will force the lock. If we fail the lock, we'll just go ahead and quick load and make our way um, and continue to try it until we get the force lock. On a master lock, even at 100, it's going to be, or a very hard lock, it's going to be 10% chance, which you'll see later on in the run, just me spamming over and over again until the game finally gives it to me. Now we're deep into DC. We're at the mall where we can go ahead and get the fast travel for the Washington Monument, which we're going to be needing for later on for the Galaxy News Radio Quest. And we're going to go ahead and make our way towards the Lincoln Memorial, where we're going to turn in that quest to Leroy Walker for killing Hannibal Hamlin. So we get the fast travel right here and make our way past the reflection pool. And there aren't really any enemies around here. But one of the big things with the Lincoln Memorial is that you can go straight ahead into the front, but you're going to get caught in dialogue. And again, that's slow. So we're going to go ahead and avoid that by making our way towards this little rock over here, which we can just walk right through 
and they won't catch you in dialogue. So let's see if I can not get caught in dialogue. That would be great. And should be good. I'll tell you that's close enough. There we go. Talk to Leroy Walker. Tell him Hannibal Hamlin is dead. Leave and make your way towards the Washington Monument. We're going to grab the Museum of History fast travel, which we need for the shoot him in the head quest. And now we're going to go ahead and do one of my favorite quests in the game where I get to pretend that I'm Nicolas Cage and steal the Declaration of Independence at the bottom of the National Archives. There's a super mutant out front. We're just going to go ahead and kill just so we can walk on out and not worry about him for the fast travel. So right here. You take him out and go into the National Archives. This place is laden with traps. There are so many traps around here once you get into the basement that if you one wrong step and you'll die. So make my way here. Again, quick save before the locked door, just in case the lock, force lock doesn't work. And this is a little scary of an area. We want to quick save, quick load constantly, or we can be set on fire by this little gas leak. Quick saving and quick loading will just reset their animation over and over again, preventing them from shooting. Go deeper in, and we'll continue to do the force lock. I'm surprised I'm getting these locks first try. And do another stair clip, just out of bounds, and now we're... Oh, oh made it. On top of the map. And we're going to go ahead and kill Bunton Gwinnett. The representative of Georgia, I believe he says he is. Take everything off of him so we can open up the stronghold doors and the Declaration of Independence. All ours. We can now make our way out, leave, and then make our way towards the Blood Ties quest. Just clip on out of here, nice and easy, and make our way to Northwest Seneca Station. We can get caught in dialogue here by Murphy, so we just don't want to talk to Murphy. So we can just avoid him and make our way down here. Radio, if you want to explain Blood Ties a little bit better. So Blood Ties is a quest uh, that we started like pretty much at the start of the run now, uh, where we were trying to uh, look through all the houses to see if anyone was alive. And we got told to go to Northwest Seneca oh, Station, which is where the family live, which are basically vampires. And they've got one of the members, or one of the uh, people of Arafu, uh captured. So we're going to find out what happened to them through um, destructive means. <laughs> That's a... Bonjour. Probably the nicest way to say it. We go ahead and kill Vance here. We get the uh, security password off of him. And we'll go get our friend behind uh, the door. So we just go ahead and interact with this. Open the door. Talk to our friend Ian. And tell him to go home. And we clip out of bounds again and make our way back towards Arafu. And he's Evan King is so happy to see us. And we can just leave after that. That'll be the end of the quest. So we don't have to time stop here again because he doesn't shoot a missile at us again. La voilà! So happy that it's done and we can leave. So typically we would have um, to get more missiles here. But since we already bought two missiles from Lucky, we don't have to pick up another missile. Because that ammo box will always spawn with at least one. And you can see on the bottom right, I have one of one. So I have two missiles left. We need two to complete the game. We have a nice long walking section. So this would be perfect for, I would say, a handful of donations. All right. We've got $25 from Thempress. 
Fallout 3 is one of my all-time favorite games. Banana Pegasus is doing an amazing job as a speedy villain in this run. We have $25 from Rob. Fallout 3 was one of the first games I ever completed. Glad to see it on HDQ. Tunnel Snakes rule! We have $25 from he who are... He who am are is myself. Donations. Donations never change. Cancer, though, could stand to change a bit. Greetings from Germa. I mean Boston. <laughs> we have $50 from Gray and Argentus. We wanted to make a bad pun here, but didn't want to deal with the fallout. We have $30 from someone. It takes me hours to beat a Hitman level, so I'm pretty stoked to see the men get hit absurdly fast. And checking on that Hitman Blood Money upgrade, we have raised 60, almost $6,600 out of that $10,000 and $47 incentive. I missed that $47 at the end. My goodness. $10,047 incentive. So we are definitely getting there. There we go. Awesome. Keep it up, guys. Uh... We're going to be making our way towards Little Lamplight, which is the pretty much the end of the game where we grab the Gek and is essential for finishing the game. So we just grab the fast travel and then make our way towards Tranquility Lane. At Tranquility Lane is where we're going to go ahead and save Dad. So we'll finally find our dad. After all this time, we, we can finally go ahead and talk to him. But he's not himself. If you guys have played this before, you'll you'll know who Dad is inside Tranquility Lane. But uh, for those who haven't, I'll keep it a little bit of a surprise for you. But we go ahead and just pass all these super mutants and go inside Smith Casey's garage. There are two options that I can do here for Speed Cripple. I can go ahead and load a previous save, but since I didn't grab, since I didn't save whenever I did Missile Cripple originally, I'll show you guys that you can do it inside of Smith Casey's garage. And the easiest way to do that is just kill all the mole rats around so it doesn't bother you whenever you're doing it because the mole rats will bump up against you and stagger you. And it just makes it so much harder to get speed cripple. So I killed them beforehand. Some others will some other runners will just leave them alive. Gotta be careful of this Mr. Gutsy off to the left side as well because he can blow up one of the cars and make you lose speed cripple. And, uh, Randio, if you want to explain why we can't keep Speed Cripple for Little Lamp Light. So, Speed Cripple de depends on the player model. If your player model changes at all, it gets reset. So, when you enter Little Lamp Light, you go from having the adult player model to the child player model, which is who you become when you enter the simulation, which means you lose all its properties, so we'll have to get it again. Which means it is one of the most annoying parts of the run because getting speed cripple once is already really, really annoying because of how inconsistent it is. But getting it a second time mid run just makes it that extra bit more difficult. Yeah, it's not exactly the most fun thing to do in a run. We've tried to find other ways and where the game puts you in from, and it's an out of bounds area but at the same time you don't get your weapons back and it just makes it really hard so we have to get it again but we're making our way in towards the simulation uh dad is just over there uh, everyone waves to dad he's just in one of the tranquility loungers right now with us and we're going to enter the simulation and the first thing we're going to do is ignore everything and go to this little abandoned house enter a secret code And then activate the invasion protocol, which is just the fail safe to open up the door to leave. This is our way to save dad. And if you guys didn't know, there's dad. Hi, dad. Make our way out of here. And there he is. We talk to him and we just tell him that we're just going to go back to Rivet City. And so he can talk to dr lee and work on the water purifying project so i think how Everything. we ended the quest there in little lamplight was actually the only time we finish a quest in a good way 
it, there's two ways to exit Little Lamp Light, um, and that was the way that actually gives you karma, as opposed to killing everyone else. Oh my god. I'm very surprised that I got that first try. <laughs> yeah, Speed uh, Cripple um, has weird properties. Later on in the game, when you haven't restarted the game for a while, it becomes incredibly difficult to get it. Yeah, it, it's honestly entirely RNG dependent, and I'm very, very surprised that I got it first try there. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and turn in all the Nuka Cola Quantums that we duplicated. And we have them in our inventory. We're going to talk to someone who is very, very uh, invested in Nuka Colas and wants more of the Nuka Cola Quantums. And she wants 30 of them to be exact, and we duplicated just a little bit over 30. So we're going to go ahead and turn that into her, and she's going to be so happy about it. So we go here, go through the speech, and give her all the new cold quantums we're carrying, and that's the end of that quest. Typically, it's a lot harder without glitches, because you wouldn't be able to duplicate it, and you would have to go around scour scour scouring across the wasteland, trying to find every single one. They have a 10% chance of spawning in Nuka Cola vending machines, and it's, it's pretty hard. So instead of finding them naturally, we can duplicate them, making it a lot easier. Now we're going to go ahead towards Tenpenny Tower. At Tenpenny Tower, we help out the ghouls, and we go ahead and get Sierra Petrovita, and... We'll go ahead and head on out back towards Paradise, where we're going to talk to our friends and tell them that we gave them back Susan Lancaster. And we're probably good for about one donation now. All right. We have $25 from Poe. So glad to be able to tune in yet again this year. I, as well as many others, surely really, really needed these vibes. Thank you all so much for sharing your passions, talents, and hard work with all of us. Big hype for the rest of the week. We also have right. an anonymous $1,000 donation. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. Thank you. So, we're going to go ahead in towards Tenpenny Tower. Not the traditional way. We're just going to jump across the wall and make our way in there that way instead of going all the way around. We make our way inside here. And we're going to go ahead and talk to Susan Lancaster now. We're going to use the Mesmatron on her because that's the way uh, our friends in Paradise want her to oh, want us to use it. Talk to her. And it this is, is where, two, then one. Yeah, this is where we start the most broken quest. If you've ever done the Tempany Tower quest normally, there's a lot to it. You have to meet all the ghouls. You can choose which side you want to do. Fortunately, there's a hidden generator where you can just open the door without even meeting the ghouls and finish the quest almost instantly. It's one of the weirdest skips and has a lot of weird nuances, but it skips one of the longest quests. Yeah, it's super fortunate as well because going through all of that is really just a pain. So, we go ahead inside with the ghouls, we kill the chief here, we grab the key, and make our way down and towards the generator room. At the generator room, we can just turn right back around and exit out. And then we just wait and fast travel to the front. If you want to go ahead and explain that a little bit better, Radio, I don't know exactly what happens. Yeah, so I think... I haven't look, actually looked at the script, but from what I remember, there's basically a timer that runs off, um, which is where the ghouls are attacking to try and take over the uh, Tenpenny Tower. And once that timer runs out, all the enemies disappear, and that allows you to fast travel, which then reloads the cell, and essentially places it under the ghouls' control to allow you to finish the quest. Yeah, just a little buggy, but enough for us to have a good speed run with it, so... Uh, we're now in Paradise, and we're going to talk to Eulogy, and we're going to go ahead and free some. Uh, we're going to free some people from them. So we got to stop, hop up here. It's a little annoying of a jump. Make our way up. We go ahead and buy them, and then we can just set them free instantly. 
It's the quickest way and the easiest way to do it. So, so we go ahead and leave. And that's it. They leave and we can now to go towards Germantown where we can go ahead and save Red. Red's going to be inside. This is behind the 100% the, the 100 skill locked door and this is the 10% that I was talking about where I'm going to be doing this a lot and just continually doing this until it gives it to me on that 10% chance. Continue in another locked door. Talk to Red about the about um Big Shorty, and we talk about the android in Rivet City, but we're not really bothered about the android in Rivet City just yet, so we're going to go ahead and make our way towards Big Town, give her back to uh, her friends, and we go ahead and leave, and that's trouble in Big Town. Make our way towards Oasis, and you guys have played... If you guys have played Fallout 3 before, you'll know about Harold. Uh, Harold is uh, a good friend and the people that, the person that these guys worship. Make our way all the way through all this dialogue, just mashing through it. Begin the ceremony to drink some sap. Blurs our vision just a little bit. We'll quick save quick load just to skip through their dialogue. And I think this should be good. Fade the white is very bright. And our good friend, goodbye. All right, now we can leave. That is the end of the quest. That is all we had to do for Oasis. And we can make our way now towards Rivet City. In Rivet City, this is where we meet back up with Dad, and we're able to do a whole bunch of other stuff, such as the Android quest, the Shoot Him in the Head quest, and... Agatha's song. Agatha's song, dialogue. and the Declaration of Independence. Pretty much every quest you could ever imagine is done in. Yeah, we turn in a lot here, so... Oh, missed the stairs. But this is where the routing is really good because a lot of these quests either require someone to be in a specific location or they need to be from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. So it's in like work hours, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., whichever way is daytime. Um, and this pretty much allows us to not have to waste any time waiting, uh, especially for Ted Strayer, who's often wherever the hell he wants in River City. Yeah, and the the doctor can also be a little bit difficult, but we wait an hour there to teleport Dad. We go to the Jefferson Memorial now. We tell him that the android is dead because we have an android component. This was actually one of the, again, one of the few good things that we do in this game, in this run. We tell him that to leave the android alone, and now we turn in the violin and the Declaration of Independence. And we can leave. Now we're going to wait for Ted Strayer and makes us wait until 9 a.m., which is a little bit of time. So if we have time for donations, that would be great. So before I get to donations, I do want to give a quick update. We have raised over $7,600 towards that $10,047 incentive, but we do not have much time left to meet that incentive. We have maybe an hour because that is actually our next run after our daily recap coming up. So if you want to see that upgrade, get your donations in now. All right. Yeah, definitely get those donations in, guys. All right, so we go ahead and get... Uh, we kill Ted, we get a special key, and we can make our way now towards the market, which is now open because it's 9 a.m. And Ted Strayer was just right in front of us. We're going to kill Flack and walk away. You can walk straight across the bridge, but you have to be far enough away to wait and fast travel. So I go down towards the rubble over here because they typically won't follow you. And we can go towards the Museum of History. The Museum of History, we're going to talk to uh, some of the one of the ghouls in there in the underworld. We have to turn in three of the special keys that we got off of Dave, Ted, and um, 
Why am I blanking on the name? Dukov. Dukov. He's so early in the run, I almost forgot. So we just go through all the dialogue here and leave. He gives us a sniper rifle and we instantly finish that quest as soon as he gives us as soon as he gives us the quest. And we're going to make our way towards the Jefferson Memorial again and do the Waters of Life quest. This is again another part of the main quest where we're going to be doing a lot. We're going to be running around doing pretty much all the tasks that dad doesn't want to do, such as flicking a switch or putting the fuses in, just some monotonous back and forth stuff that dad is too important to do right now. But we'll thank him for uh, what he does in a little bit. So uh, we ask him what we need to do right now and we'll go down towards the basement where we killed all those super mutants. Do another little stair clip here. There we go. Get on top of here, activate that switch and we'll COC into this pipe. And one of the harder clips in the game, which is this gate, it's pretty inconsistent um, with the lineup. There we go, I just saved it. Sometimes it's actually faster just to go all the way around. Other times you'll get that clip first try. Go back towards dad and you'll get your fuses. With the fuses, you just gotta go plug them back in. And then we'll get set up for the valve. We have to turn a valve, and that's when everything kind of goes astray, and a lot of stuff goes down, which you guys will you guys will see in a little bit. Oh, not letting me through. There we go. Now we're deeper into the basement. Put these fuses in. Coc again. Make our way back upstairs. Go to this control panel. Activate the power switch. And make our way out towards the tunnel. And again, we're gonna flick that valve and we're gonna activate that uh, semi cutscene. It forces you to stay in place. You can't really skip it. Um, so, I mean, I would technically call that a cutscene. Um, coming up in one second. Here we are. And this is the pipe that I was talking about. We have our super mutant friends up there. And now we have some other friends coming in. Here comes the Enclave. We can't go through this door yet, so... It's always nice to enjoy the show. We walk through here. We gotta watch out. If we fall straight down, we can cripple our legs and lose speed cripple, which we don't want to do this late into the run. And clip through this fence again, and we're greeted by some Enclave soldiers. There's only two of them. Again, the Alien Blaster is a very broken weapon, so we'll one-shot them every single time. If I can hit them, there we go. Now we're going to do a fun glitch called TPI or third person interaction where you just go in the third person and you can talk to them. It'll skip their dialogue line and cause them to advance uh, further in, saving just a little bit of time instead of hearing them talk or quick saving and quick loading. Because it's that blank dialogue box because you're not supposed to be able to talk to them. And now we're locking Dr. Lee in an animation. By spamming E, you can push her all the way down here and cause her not to run back. If you don't spam E, she'll run all the way back up to that little area over there. And she should be ready to talk. There we go. We go ahead and leave and go deeper in to the Jefferson Memorial to escape towards the Citadel. And uh, if you guys don't like, well, if you guys like Dr. Lee, I would recommend covering your eyes just for a second because this is the fastest way to do it. There we go. And we're gonna make our way through this tunnel. Um, it's pretty linear. 
we just interact through a door uh, underground. So, uh, time for a few donations. All right. So, I do want to give an update. We have met the Hitman Blood Money Upgrade Incentive. Thank you all very much. Excellent work, agents. Let's go. We have... We have a $25 donation from Fox. Hello, GDQ, and greetings from the Vault Tech. Fallout 76 producer here. Fallout 3 remains one of my favorite games of all time. Here are a few caps to help bring some good karma to the wasteland. Speaking of karma, I can't wait to see how Banana Pegasus deals with Megaton. You will be judged. Best of luck on the run, and may Adam's glow guide you. Thankfully, I didn't blow up Megaton. I'm very happy about that. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and wait just for an hour. And look, Dr. Lee's all right. See you guys. Uh, Radio, if you want to explain kind of what we did right there for uh, Dr. Lee. So when you do the Waters of Life casually, you usually get stuck in a very linear auto-scroller kind of part of the quest where you have to wait for it to unlock a door. You have to guide the three companions along with you. But if she's unconscious and you change like into the second area, she'll just teleport to you. So that's why we knock her out right at the start. And as long as you're fast enough to enter the door, uh, she'll just teleport right to the end. You only wait an hour, so she walks up uh, to the Citadel door to ask for James. Or to Lions, even. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things that I didn't explain too well was if you wait an hour and a character is walking forward, they'll skip all the way, they'll walk all the way to wherever they're walking to, and then they'll stop. This is only certain for some characters that are path specifically to make sure that they go to a location after a certain trigger. We can use this to make sure that Dr. Lee goes all the way to um, that door or we can have the person at Oasis go all the way up to the sap instead of waiting for him to do that long walk or pushing him all the way there. And this is a fun little quest. Um, I'm going to go ahead and heal up here just to be safe. <laughs> Stuck in the door. But um, there's a whole mess of super mutants here outside the GNR building and we're going to have a giant super mutant, the behemoth, come out around the corner right there. Um, but if you're fast enough, you can just go up to the intercom. Looks like it's all clear. And we can just go inside. So that's due to um, a huge fail-safe uh, fail trigger in the game of once you reach a certain part of the Waters of Life quest, it's meant to auto-unlock this door in the off chance that this game was buggy and broke somehow, which has never happened to anyone, but they added it just for yeah. safe measure. Yeah, so they just have no idea that a whole battle is going on outside, and that's kind of the way I like to think about it instead of the uh, the other trigger. So I'll show you guys a fun little trick, a little developer trick on how they do elevators in this game. It's pretty interesting uh, because the elevator actually doesn't move. Uh, let me show you guys real quick. Let's see if I can get this line up. There we go. So this is what it looks like outside the elevator. It's uh, the world moving around you. Uh, the, the elevator isn't moving. The elevator is absolutely still. It's just all of this moving around you. It's a nice little developer trick. <laughs> it's a really convincing elevator when you're inside. I wanted to show that off just to... Let you guys know how it actually works. And we uh, put the satellite dish on there from the Virgo 2 satellite that we got at the Museum of Technology. And we just got to find 3Dog now. There he is. Hey, super and we'll turn in the quest. And we can leave. Now we're going to make our way towards Riley's Rangers. At Riley's Rangers, we just have to, uh, well, help out Riley's Rangers, quote unquote. Um, and you guys will see how we do that. But... Um, now is good for time for one or two donations. Sounds good. We have $25 from Corey Dornbush. 
Fallout 3 is my first AAA game I ever worked on. I am so happy to see the environments I worked on and the entire QA quest cycle be done at blinding speed. Merci beaucoup, Banana Pegasus. Good for one more. We have $75 from Zach W. Here's to the game that made me love RPGs. Thanks to the runners and tunnel snakes rule. Alrighty. So we're going to make our way to Vernon Square now, where we're going to go ahead inside of this hotel. And at this hotel is where we're going to need the fusion bat, uh, the fusion fission battery. I have a hard time pronouncing that. The fission battery that we're going to put inside the elevator and fix. And that's why we also need our repair up to 75. So let's go ahead and line ourselves into this rubble. Hopefully I can get this clip. This one's a little bit tricky at times. We go... There we go. And go on top of this rubble so we can jump across to the outside of the door where we can interact with the behind, behind it. All right, hold on. Ooh. There we go. Perfect. Get through here. And now we're inside the hotel. And whenever you're out of bounds, it can be a little annoying navigating because a lot of the floor just seems to disappear at times. So I'm going to keep quick saving just so I, if I fall down, it's fine. I'm going to drop a hard save here as well because it can be pretty, it can be rather inconsistent, this clip. So we clip in towards the top here. Perfect. We repair the elevator with our 75 repair. And keep on trying at this door until we get it open. And make our way deeper. We're going to go all the way up and talk to Riley's Rangers. Riley's Rangers right now is at the top of the hotel and they're really fighting off all these super mutants. And they worked really hard. They just... It just... It was a big fight. You can hear all the explosions. And they want us to help them out. We're going to go ahead and repair the elevator for them. Uh, let them go inside, and uh, I don't know if you guys want to watch this, but uh, oh, I gotta kill them quick, or else they'll get mad at me. There we go. Yeah, it's important to note there's a timer. Um, if you don't kill all three of them within a certain amount of time, the quest will fail. But if you kill them all within a certain amount of time, the quest will, for some reason, complete. Yeah, and. Now we're going back to Riley, the person in charge of Riley's Rangers, and we have to go ahead and tell her that her friends died, and we we tried our best to help them, but um, yeah, they sadly couldn't help. This is the fastest way to do it, and we're going to go ahead past my favorite dialogue in the game. Uh, if you guys have played this before, you'll know about my good friend in the worm. Never heard it in French, but that is that's pretty funny, honestly, in French too. But make our way towards Riley's Rangers now. We'll turn in the quest, and she'll be real upset with us that we. But we gotta tell her that we tried everything. We couldn't. Couldn't help them. And we asked for a reward and she just is not having it with us. But we'll make our way toward Vault 101 now, back to the beginning of the game. And at Vault 101, there is a big, there's a, there's a little fight going on. Uh, Radio, you want to explain? So after you leave Vault 101, um, after a Mata is meant to help you escape, but we kind of skipped all that. The vault kind of goes into a state of anarchy where no one's really in power and is kind of split up into factions. So they send out a distress signal hoping for someone to come and save the day. Somehow we co we uh, come back and um, decide to take care of it in our own special way. Which is basically by ruining everything. Yeah. So... Surprise, with 63% speech, we still fail it. So, we fail it a third time with 
This is the RNG that I love in this run. Four times. <laughs> and this one. There we go. All right, now we're going to make our way lower in. We're going to talk to Amada, who is just around the door. Shit. We tell her it was rather peaceful, it was really civil, and we don't want to talk to Butch, so we're just going to time stop right around him. Makes it nice and easy, and make our way outside the vault. Last plus ici. With the vault, there's a... There, there's some issues with it. If you go onto the right side after you're on top of the vault, it will have an invisible wall. So we, you always go lefties. We're on, we're on the lefty side. And we'll get on top of here and make our way out of the vault. And then we'll fast travel the little lamplight to get close to finishing the game. Big Shorty has died, and that's what we need to finish the Strictly Business quest. I'm going to quick save, quick load, just to have that vault noise go away. And talk to our good friend, Mayor McCready. We ask him to come in. He lets us come in. And we're going to do another fun glitch called Boyd Swimming Radio. Okay, so you may have seen this uh, previously in the run, like during those. But water out of bounds isn't always visible. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. When you're in this invisible water state, your character will sink. For some reason, if you then go back into normal water and load a save, you kind of keep this invisible water property forever. And it allows you to gain pretty much infinite height. And it just so happens that you can reach the exit door with the perfect height to get into Murder Pass. Yeah, there's a couple different ways. Um, in the any percent route, they we use void swimming, but since we already go down and we have to talk to Mayor McCready in all quest, we can go an alternate route. But void swimming still does save a little bit of time. And some of these doors, I'll just open up because I know that they're a lot harder to clip through compared to this one, and the reason why some of the doors are opened rather than clipped through. This door is another one that you can easily clip through. And now we're on picking... We just finished picking up the trail and we're going to be moving on to almost the final quest of the game, Finding the Gardens of Light... Uh, Finding the Garden of Eden. Go up here, do a nice little out of bounds. And then we just clip right back in and go right back out of bounds back up to interact with the door from below. And there we go. And we're going to go ahead and grab the Gek. Um, and the Any% percent will go around to the other side where we'll uh, pull the fire alarm so we can activate the Finding the Garden of um, Finding the Garden of Eden quest. But since we already have it in all quests, we don't need to do that. Now we're going to go ahead and pick up the Gek. I'm going to drop down a hard save just in case I fall through. Clip through nice and easy. And that third person interaction that I showed you guys before, we do it again to pick up the Gek. And we're going to clip through here. Hopefully. There we go. And now we're going to do a rather new skip called Colonel Autumn Skip. Radio. So if you've ever played Fallout 3 casually, everyone will have seen this cutscene here where you get captured by the Enclave and taken to Raven Rock. It's about a 50 second unskippable cutscene. And it's been known for a while that there are ways to skip this cutscene. Or not skip, but to speed it up. But up until Christmas Day, this was pretty much impossible to do. It was banned from all runs. But somehow, we found a way to make it consistent. First by try. First try. Jamming clothes into where he spawns. It messes up his pathing. And these two just start talking over each other, not caring at all about what the other person thinks. And it makes the cutscene around 15 seconds faster. I am very surprised that I got that first try. <laughs> um, that was a. Like Radio said, it came out Christmas. Very new glitch. So 
here um, is where we talk to the president. The president has us locked behind this little uh, barricade, and we have to quick save, quick load in two second increments because if you don't wait two seconds, he won't advance his dialogue. So I mentally count out just about two seconds and continue to um, skip his dialogue that way. We're now in Raven Rock. We're just going to go ahead and, oops, too far. Make our way through Raven Rock. Um, it's pretty linear. We'll go ahead and clip out of bounds on top of um, a part here. And hopefully I can do a trigger skip for you guys. It's a pretty, how do I explain it? It's not pixel perfect radio. You know the door skip uh, after Colonel? Yeah. No, after so President here? In uh, the level one, the final part of uh, this Raven Rock complex, it is chock full of triggers and invisible walls, and it's a mess to look at. But they are all important. Ah. There is a very, very hard clip that you can do, um, which skips a bunch of these triggers. If you just ignore them and try and leave, you'll get stuck on a wall. So you have to go back and hit a trigger and then go back and again it. to exit. <laughs> so you'll so, see, yeah. You can see there's no enemies here. I'm going to show you guys this just real quick. Invisible wall. But if you go all the way back here and loop around that little trigger, It'll get rid of the invisible walls. The enemies won't spawn here, but this door will open up and you can just walk right through. It's important to note that the reason we know so much about how the triggers work is due to Bethesda being amazing and providing uh, the GEC, the Garden, of Eden, the Garden of Eden creation kit, which is a massive modding platform, which allows you to see everything in the base game, how the triggers and scripts work, is one of the greatest tools in all of Fallout speedrunning. Yeah, and now we're at the end of the game. We are almost there. We'll just have to enter the passcode, the one that Dad has been saying this whole game. So we're going to just skip through all of this, quick save and quick load to skip all the dialogue. And again, it's, it's pretty linear. We're going to have Elder Lions try and give us power armor. We're going to say no. And then our good friend Liberty Prime uh, is going to be activated. And we don't have to escort him uh, during during any of the speedruns, except for Glitchless, uh, we es we don't escort him. During Glitchless, no, we have to escort skip. him because we can't. You don't do that anymore. We don't? Oh my. No, it's a not glitch glitch. been out of Glitchless. Yeah. Glitchless. This game can't be done glitchless, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so we make our way up here. And then we've just fast travel to the Citadel. And we ignore everyone else and make our way towards the Jefferson Memorial. I'm going to time stop at the bottom of the water uh, so I can walk on the bottom instead of swimming because walking with speed cripple is faster than swimming. And while we make our way, we're good for one last donation of the run. One last donation. We have $7 from non-binary code. I'd like to put my money towards Save the Heralds. Oh. Oh. Uh, all right. Well, cute kittens are the only thing that could fix this. All righty. So this is the end of the game. Typically, it's blocked off by this invisible force field. And we're just going to go ahead and make our way around it. They forgot this little gap right here that you can just quick save, quick load. Makes it super easy to get through. And now we are almost at the end of the game. Um, like I said, as soon as I press enter, that is the final cutscene. So I'll say 216 then enter and that'll be time. So coming up on it, we just say we don't want to fight him. Go up into this corner here and 216 enter time. And we're going to double check to make sure that we have all of our quests. And we have 30. So that is all quests. And uh, since Portal showed it off, what is it again, Radio? Uh, play it like kill and then play it like resurrect. 
All right, so we're gonna do player dot kill player dot, and we're gonna do this where it spins you around a little bit though. So. Um. Oh. Q Q Q. Uh, oh, yeah. All righty. Um. That was Fallout 3 All Quest. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for all of the donations. It goes towards an amazing cause. Uh, thank you, GDQ, for having me again. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Um, thank you, everyone, who supported me in this. If you guys are very, in if you guys are interested at all at Fallout Speedrunning, check out the Fallout Discord. Check out um, the uh, Speedrun page whole bunch of resources. We're on the Fallout Wiki now with some speedrunning information. If you guys want to check that out too. Uh, Radio, you have anything? No, I think that's everything. Alrighty. Well, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much and uh, have a great rest of your GDQ. See you guys. And thank you so much, Banana Pegasus, for that amazing run. We have a $100 donation from Alicia. Now, what if I, the all-powerful three dog, woo, 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 were to tell you that somewhere right here in the Capital Wasteland is a place with lots of speedrunners and people raising money for an awesome cause? Fallout is one of my favorite games, and my mom is a cancer survivor, so I had to donate during this run. Thanks so much to everyone who makes this event possible every year. And with that, we're going to take a quick break, but don't go away. We will be back soon with more awesome games done quick.
Welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 Online. We have a $2,000 donation from DK Salfo. Oh, I heard there was another incentive to be met. Don't mind if I do. And that incentive, of course, went towards our Hitman Blood Money upgrade to Pro SA, which has been met. And so we will be seeing that run very soon. In the meantime, we are going to hear a quick word from our sponsors. Hi everyone, my name is Furl. I'm here to show you some quick speedrunning tips and tricks for Tribes of Midgard. This game is really easy to start speedrunning, so let's begin. Ha! Ah, 29.55, got him. First up, we have the Werewolf Skip. This trick is great for beginners, since all you have to do is run to the corner and then back the way you came. For this skip, there are audio and visual cues, but they're traps, so you need complete confidence in the trick because if you hesitate, this will happen. Next, we have the Witch Quick Kill. You and your party can stack tripwires to quickly do a ton of damage and kill the witch before it gets a chance to retaliate. With a trusting, coordinated team, you can accomplish all kinds of things. Like this. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. See, I told you guys, 24 HP. You just gotta believe in me, okay? Uh, what? Dude, I'm fighting like, uh, like 15 of these. <laughs> wow. If a Viking-themed co-op speedrun interests you, come join our community at the This Is The One Discord to find your own team and start running. Be sure to check out the latest bundle from Humble Bundle, including Tribes of Midgard, benefiting the Prevent Cancer Foundation. All right, thank you so much to our sponsors. We have a $25 donation from Pink! Exclamation point. Enjoying this run while I cook dinner, but realized my cat Tsunadi has been enjoying it more. She's been absolutely transfixed to the screen for a while. Go, go, AGDQ, fight that cancer. And with that, that is actually going to do it for me at the donation station for this evening. I will be back Saturday morning, though, for Mega Man Blocks. We'll get hyped for that, as well as the entire rest of the marathon. I've been Musical Daredevil, and now I'm going to hand it over to our incredible interview team for our daily recap. Hello, everybody at AGDQ 2023 Online. Welcome to the daily recap for Monday. So much amazing stuff on the schedule tonight, or uh, all day, and I am joined by my wonderful friends and coworkers, Fiesel and Jay Hobbs. How are the both of you doing? Hello. So I'm doing good. Fantastic. Yeah, doing great. A lot of great runs today. Right. So much good stuff. Let's dive right in. Uh, Hobbs, you, I, we got to talk about this exciting thing that happened on stream today. Hobbs, of please course. take it away. Of course. <laughs> you all had to have seen this one coming when it happened. That's right. We got to talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge because they got a world record. They got a world record here on AGDQ 2023. But the clip we're showing here is specifically a really difficult stun lock on this boss to the point where the commentators did not think they were even going to go for this in a co-op <laughs> setting uh, and, and in a, this, the, this kind of setting, you know, on the big stage. So they went for it. They absolutely nailed wow. it and they were able a, a new world record. Like that's, that's incredible. Over in the a race the format run. too. I feel like yeah. it's so nuts. <laughs> that's great. The boss didn't even move. That was great. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely I, amazing. It's really spectacular that, you know, obviously in a race setting, things are more tense. It's, 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 it's really stressful uh, to get a world record in that setting is absolutely wild. Uh, Fiesel, can we talk about SSX? I mean, can we, can we talk right. about SSX? We, we can, but I think we should watch SSX. Okay, that's, that sounds good. This, is, this game is really fun. If you haven't played this game, it's just a lot of fun. It's really intuitive, easy to play. But here we go on the last board. We've got a... Out of bounds clip. Just clipping right through that glass. Here we go. <laughs> oh. Right through there. 
Um, yeah, Aloha Ice Jam, the final track here is just really cool. I, I love, it's a really cool skip to watch. Not even just the clip, but like getting to see also a, a, mm-hmm. that entire movement line right after with all of the the tricks and everything. I, I just think it's a, a fantastic showcase of a game that a ton of people have played, right? Like yes. everyone knows this is six. Right. Yeah. And it, I love a game where you got to do tricks to go fast. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Know, just encourages you to the like freedom of expression of it all. Uh, it's really mm-hmm. great. Uh, well, I really want to talk about Cyberhook. Um, this is a game that I myself have not played, but I was mesmerized and glued to my screen for this entire clip. Uh, so this is a wonderful speed run by Squealio. And this line, I just like, there's not even words to describe what is taking place. It's just so self explanatory and so beautiful. This is like bread and butter speedrunning, in oh, my opinion. It, it's so gorgeous. As somebody who has like done a dabbled a little bit into running Cyberhook, the speed, like the speedometer in the bottom left, it mm-hmm. is so hard to keep that thing cranked the entire time and navigating through all of those boxes at the end. Oh, it's absurd. just so pretty. <laughs> like that's <laughs> both not just the game, which is obviously really gorgeous. I love the art style, but the runner's sort of movement through everything is so flowy. Yeah, so nice. Um, yeah, everything looks so smooth. Right, mm-hmm. completely. Check uh, it out for sure. For sure, go back and watch that entire vod and any of the runs that we talk about tonight. Please go back and watch them; they deserve your attention. Uh, we kind of want to jump over really quickly to Twitter uh, because we just posted a tweet a little while ago asking what you liked from today. So I thought we'd jump in and just see some of those. Uh, so at Fool says TMNT, I couldn't agree more. I and mean, we talk about that world record mm-hmm. is amazing. Um, at Carrarium says Superliminal was a really cool run to watch first thing this morning. Shredder's Revenge was a really awesome time and world record Airboat man. Kind of everything. <laughs> yeah, <that> just call <laughs> calling out every run. But Superliminal yeah. was one that uh, I was also considering like throwing in this because there were some just really mind bending skips and tricks yeah. in a game that is all about breaking your brain with perspective to begin with. So to take that and then throw it into a speedrunning context and finding ways to go out of bounds, very very neat one. Highly recommend going back for that. Absolutely. Uh, and at also JPEG says, I could not take my eyes off the screen during the SSX run. It was mesmerizing from mm-hmm. beginning to end, just delightful to watch. I mean, that's sort of what we were talking about, right? It's just this game that everybody remembers from their childhood, but nobody was ever actually good at. But like <laughs> watching somebody who is good at it is really nice. Um, and then we have a couple people uh, at Callus EM and at Emmy Elliott PP, both sort of saying uh, airboat here. And I feel airboat. like that is a great transition yeah. into what is definitely one of my highlights from the day, which is M Sushi uh, with his airboat percent run of Portal. This is just a tremendous speed run. Uh, it is a Portal run where you do not use the Portal gun. And I had the <laughs> the the honor of interviewing M Sushi before this, and he is just so knowledgeable about the game. And obviously he's using the airboats to clip out of bounds, which is sort of the like thing you see a lot. But then this airboat boosting where the airboat spawning is bound to the scroll wheel. So you just flick your <laughs> scroll wheel to get like airboats to uh, boost you around the room. As as a runner of PC games on occasion, anytime you hear bound to the scroll wheel, you are in <laughs> yeah. for some shenanigans. Yeah, There's, absolutely. You don't do that for no reason. If you missed airboat percent, you owe it to yourself to watch it. It really was uh, something else. And uh, Fiesel, you know, I guess we, we've got you on sports tonight. I mean, it's it's Fiesel Sports Night. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the sports commentator. Yeah, well, so run that if you missed it, go back and check out Skate. Uh, this is um, this game is harder than it looks, we'll say, or harder than than this runner makes it look. But here we go. We got the last level here. Uh, it's the end of the game. X Games Mega. Uh, Rank ramp, gold medal, it's two 900s, and a power slide here. Um, and gets it first try. Oh, so, yeah. Whoa, that looks like it's gonna would make me dizzy. I'd probably puke <laughs> in midair if that was me. This is a game that I, I played this when I was younger. And it, like Fiesel said, it, it is hard to overstate. Like, this is a very hard video game. <laughs> right, yeah. We're, we're, we're so used to like the, the Tony Hawks, the, the Sean Palmer, uh, right. all, all those kinds of games that are just about like press a few buttons, you do like 17 tricks. But right. the way that you control this game makes it completely different. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and Jay Hobbs, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about, well, I know you want to talk about. <laughs> it's you know, you know I got to sneak it in there. I'm going to <laughs> go ahead and, uh, and just say, let's go ahead and just watch this one. Uh, we have the... Just longest bunny hop. Unfortunately, he doesn't get the full chain, but it's extremely difficult because you have some cars coming the way. Miles Morales here. Uh, Pestilus 
is doing such a great job with this game and then immediately showing off the cool speed tech in this run that you get to use whenever you got to move down Ooh. a long uh, road. Gets interrupted by the <laughs> truck there for a moment, but then gets right back into it and just Whoa. hopping, constantly keeping that speed, gaining speed as well, and just booking it towards that destination. This was just one of many extremely cool like pieces of movement in this game. There's a lot of really fun mechanics with, uh, with Miles... Miles' kind of variations of the uh, Spider-Man formula. Really, really fun one. And the combat encounters are just as interesting. Like, they they really are a huge part of this. I mean, it's still going. The clip <laughs> it was still going. Incredible, incredible. A lot of the clips we watched tonight, I feel like I've said the words bread and butter too many times already. <laughs> but, like, it's the, it, you know, I love speed tech that is so... Like it explains itself, you know what I mean, uh, and and it's really nice to see that in the Spider-Man clip as well. In a AAA modern title, to see like fun movement and everything, I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, why don't we? You know, I, I'm excited to hear what the two of you are looking forward to in the next 24 hours. Um, so, Fiesel, I gotta know what on the schedule is catching your eye. Mm, what jumps out at me is the Castlevania block. We got Harmony of Despair and Ari of Sorrow coming up tomorrow. I would definitely watch those. Awesome. Really Jay Hops, what about you? Yeah, so I, there are a, there's like a good chunk of about four to six runs yeah. that I want to catch tomorrow all in a row. But I, I'm going to shout the Transistor to Jack 2 block especially. Uh, great game. Super Mario Galaxy 2 is in there. That's going to be incredible. But if you've never heard of it, if you've never seen it, you got to watch Fashion Police Squad, all right? <laughs> Tune in for this one. Runner Dangerous is super cool. Awesome, fantastic person. And the game, the... Initials for that game, if you abbreviate it, are FPS, but it's about <laughs> fashion. That's all I'm giving you. Tune in. You got it. You got to check it out. It's really fun. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, my poll for, and it's actually just in a few hours, so I'm kind of Ooh. like cheating a little bit because it's not technically tomorrow, but you know, it's in between two daily recaps, so I'm counting it. Uh, you got to watch Ape Escape 2 by Liquid Squid. Uh, if you've never played Ape Escape, this is a visually very representative speedrun like I've been talking about for this whole daily recap. If you have played Ape Escape, this game gets blown wide open with the various tools that you're able to use, and Squid is one of the best players in the world. You're not going to want to miss this run, I promise. Uh, and with that, I think we are going to throw it back. Everybody, please stay tuned for more Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 online. I've been ADEF, joined by Fiesel and Jay Hobbs. Thanks so much for watching, and stay tuned and donate for more speedruns. Bye, everyone. Welcome on back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2023. Hello, everyone. My name is Nicole Goodnight, and I will be your host for the upcoming games. Really excited to be here. I'm so excited to see you all. I hope you're having a fantastic day, night, whatever time it is where you are. And uh, let's go ahead and, and read a donation. I hope you all are doing well. It's so good to see you all again. Uh, I have a $50 donation from Bronxosaur that says, AGDQ is always the highlight of a new year. Appreciate the hard work of every Everyone involved putting this towards all the kittens that is a fantastic thing to put a donation towards uh, if you do not know what that is referencing goat simulator cute kitten overload is at four thousand fifty six out of ten thousand dollars and uh, that's what we need for that so let's go ahead and get those in and get that incentive met because who doesn't want to see a whole bunch of cute kittens right i know i do so <laughs> Get that met for me. Honestly, I have five cats. I will tell you all about them, but now is not the time because I have gotten word that we're ready for a run. So with that being said, let's go ahead and head over to 3Baller with Hitman Blood Money PC.